Hi, welcome back. And if you're watching this video, then you're seeing part two of my video series on pumpkin varieties. In part one of the series, we visited a roadside stand for pumpkins. And then I showed you all the different varieties of pumpkins and talked a little bit about them. In this series, we're gonna take all of the pumpkins that we showed you in part one, and this time we're gonna cut them up so you can see the insides and we're gonna cook them up because they're all made for eating. But before we begin doing that, I've got a story for you here called The Pumpkin Book, written by Gail Gibbons. And this is a non-fiction book all about pumpkins. The Pumpkin Book by Gail Gibbons. Pumpkins come in all shapes and sizes. Pumpkins are members of the squash family. There are many different kinds of pumpkins. Small pumpkins, big pumpkins, round pumpkins, tall pumpkins. Gardeners and farmers call them pumpkin varieties. Some pumpkins have a smooth skin and others have lots of bumps. Dill's Gigantic Atlantic Pumpkin, the Little Bee Jack, Baby Bear, Connecticut Field, Lumina, Big Max, Red October, Small Sugar Pie, and Trick or Treat. In the springtime, when the sun's rays begin to warm the soil, it is planting time. Some gardeners turn the soil to get it ready to plant a small pumpkin patch. A pumpkin patch is where pumpkins are grown. Some farmers use their plows to slice through and turn over the dirt. The fields will eventually be a huge pumpkin patch. The soil is ready. It is time to plant the pumpkin seeds. The beginning of a pumpkin is curled up inside each pumpkin seed. Food is stored there too. The seed has a seed coat on the outside to protect it. The bigger the seed, the bigger the variety of pumpkin that will grow. Pumpkin seed, beginning of a pumpkin. The food and the seed coat. Sometimes pumpkin seeds are planted in rows. Other times they're planted in small circular areas called hills. Several shallow holes are poked into the hill and one pumpkin seed is dropped into each hole and covered with dirt. Each hill should be about one meter to two meters apart to give the plants lots of room to grow. Each hill should be about three feet to six feet apart to give the plants lots of room to grow. A pumpkin seed won't sprout until the dirt is warm and water has soaked the seed to soften its coat. Once the seed coat breaks open, a root begins to grow down into the soil. It takes in water and minerals from the soil for food. After about one week, two leaves appear where each pumpkin seed was planted. These smooth leaves are called seed leaves. They begin to make more food for the plant from the sunlight and air. After a few days, small pumpkin vine leaves appear. These leaves look different. They are prickly and have rough jagged edges. More new vine leaves grow. Stems begin to grow and twist, crawling along the ground as they become vines The vines grow thicker and thicker. They grow curly tendrils that wrap themselves around other parts of the plant to help spread the vines. Gold-colored flowers begin to bloom. A pumpkin begins to grow when a grain of pollen from the stamen of a male pumpkin flower lands on the stigma of a female pumpkin flower. This is called pollination. Sometimes pollen moves from flower to flower when the wind blows. Bees and other insects help pollinate too. 
pollen rubs on and off their bodies as they travel from flower to flower in search of nectar. The female flower has a small green ball beneath its blossom. When the flower is pollinated, the little ball begins to grow. It is a very, very small pumpkin. Over time, it becomes bigger, and bigger, and bigger. The pumpkin's skin begins to turn from green to orange. All of the pumpkins in the pumpkin patch begin to turn orange. In the fall, when the vines begin to dry up and die, it is harvest time. It usually takes from 80 to 120 days, depending on the variety, for a seed to grow into a ripened pumpkin. It is ready to pick if it feels hard on the outside and sounds hollow when it is tapped. Often shears are used to clip the pumpkins from their vines leaving about seven and a half centimeters of stem, or three inches. The stem helps to keep the harvested pumpkin from getting moldy. During the fall, more and more pumpkins of many shapes and sizes appear at roadside stands and in stores. Fall makes people think of country fairs. Sometimes awards are given for the biggest, the prettiest, or the strangest pumpkin grown. The biggest pumpkin ever grown was in New York State in 1996. It weighed about as much as a small car, 1,061 pounds, or 481 kilograms. At fairs, there are pumpkin pie tasting contests, too. When the pilgrims came to the New World, Friendly Native American Indians, as First Nations people, showed them how to plant pumpkins. Often, the Indian women were the pumpkin farmers of their tribes. The pilgrims ate pumpkins every day in different forms, such as pumpkin bread, pumpkin pie, and pumpkin seed cereal. Thanksgiving reminds people of the pilgrims' first harvest season. They wanted to give thanks for the food they would have through the cold winter months. They celebrated by having a Thanksgiving feast. Halloween is on October 31st. A long time ago, people believed that ghosts, witches, and goblins roamed around that night. Some people built bonfires to scare them away. Later, October 31st was called All Hallows' Even, which meant Holy Evening. It was the night before a church festival called All Hallows' or All Saints' Day. All Hallows' Even was shortened to Halloween. Today, Halloween is celebrated in different ways. How to Carve a Pumpkin Number one, always have an adult help you. Number two, Take a knife that is not too sharp or a special cutter used for carving pumpkins and cut the lid off the pumpkin. Number three, take a big spoon and scoop out the seeds and insides of the pumpkin. You can save the seeds to dry and eat later or to plant for next year's pumpkins. Number four, draw the design you want using a pencil or a washable magic marker. Number five, cut along the lines you drew be careful and always carve away from yourself. Number six, wipe away any magic marker lines and put the lid back on your pumpkin. It's ready for Halloween. There are pumpkins. It's great fun to carve pumpkins into what you want them to be. Funny pumpkins, scary pumpkins, beautifully carved pumpkins. Always have an adult place and light the candle. Some people place a candle or a light inside and light it so the pumpkin will shine in all its glory on Halloween night. Other people decorate pumpkins with paint, glitter, and other decorations. These pumpkins can last a long time because they haven't been carved. No two pumpkins are alike. They all have their very own personalities. All lined up on Halloween night, 
They are a glowing sight to behold. Isn't it amazing that all this began with a few small pumpkin seeds? Glow, pumpkins, glow. So here we've got our peanut pumpkin all nicely washed and we're going to cut it open, take a look at the inside and then we'll cut this up into pieces, put it onto some roasting trays and into the oven it'll go. So again these hard bits that are like peanut shells, which is the sugar that's been kind of pushed through the skin and hardened on here, we'll be able to cut straight through those as long as we have a sharp enough knife here. Oh, and there we go. Look how nice and orange the flesh of this pumpkin is. And this is one of the better tasting ones. All right, we're gonna cut this one up into pieces. So we're going to put this one in the oven at 375 degrees for about 40 minutes. So there's our peanut pumpkin. We'll put it in the oven to roast. Mmm, doesn't that look good? Roasted peanut pumpkin. So we've got the one too many pumpkin here. We're going to cut this one open and see what the inside looks like. And then we'll be cooking this one up and eating it. Well, so when we look inside this one, it's got almost a greenish light yellow. Quite a bit of green here in the, in all the fibers. So we've got our pie pumpkin, our pumpkin pie making pumpkin. We're going to cut this one up and put it onto the tray and put it into the oven to make a pumpkin pie. See the inside of that one? Nice yellow flesh and lots and lots of fiber and seeds in there. We'll just get all the guts scooped out. There we go, with a little bit of magic, we'll turn this into pumpkin pie. Okay, so it looks like our pumpkin's probably ready, magically turned into a pumpkin pie. Oh, yeah. Okay, maybe not really, but this is what that pumpkin would turn into 
if you made it into pumpkin mixture and put it into a pumpkin pie crust. So this is our little tiger stripe pumpkin, which is supposed to have a bit of a nutty flavor to it. It looks too small to eat, but supposedly you can. So again, we'll just cut this one up. And there you can see the cavity is quite small and quite a nice strong yellowy orange um, flesh to it here. So we'll cook that one up and eat that as well. Here's our green pumpkin. It's an Italian pumpkin. I'm gonna cut it open so the inside looks like. Look at that thick, huge stem on it, though. Much more squat looking pumpkin, quite orangey looking on the flesh. Okay, so here we have our princess pumpkin, part of the fairy tale variety. Uh, I believe this one came from France, it's the Rouge. We're going to cut this one open, see what it looks like. Look at the big seeds inside that one. So here we have the uh, polar bear pumpkin or Lumina or ghost pumpkin, Casper pumpkin, the white one. Let's see what the inside looks like. There we go, got that one open, and you can see the inside, much lighter, paler orange. So we've got our Cinderella pumpkin here that we're going to cut open and take a look at the inside. Okay, there we go. So you can see this is a very orange pumpkin inside. Okay, it's getting closer to Christmas time and we're on to our next pumpkin here. It's been sitting in the garage. Nice big round red one. There we go. Yeah, look at the beautiful color inside that one. Oh, we're going to scoop it out, cut it up into pieces, throw it into the uh, oven, and roast it up. Mmm, doesn't that look good? So today we're going to cut up our blue Jardale, which as you can tell by my shirt, has already been sitting in the garage and it's early December. And uh, pumpkins last a long time, so let's cut it up and see what it looks like inside. You might remember that the blue Jardale is from Australia, and it happens to be one of my favorite ones to eat. There we go. And given how blue it is on the outside, you expect it to be blue on the inside, but... It's not at all. So we have our turban pumpkin here, also known as a Turkish turban or a Turk's turban. And uh, never eaten this one and never even cut one open, so it should be interesting when cutting this. It's all washed, nice and clean. <laughs> Look 
what the inside of this is. Oh, kind of a yellowishy green, and where those bumps are, it's still pumpkin in there. Hmm. All right, so we've got our turban pumpkin all cut up and seasoned, and we've seasoned it with some Greek style and some lemon and herb seasoning. And it's ready for the oven next. Hope you enjoyed learning about pumpkins and how you can cook them up.